From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Don Taylor. What do we do about Doris McLean? Find out if she's telling the truth about being legally dead and having her husband collect her insurance, Don? No, no, Johnny. I mean right now. You can't press any charges against her or him until we get some facts. Well, she gave us a statement admitting everything. Can't we file charges on that? Uh, I'd rather not. Huh? Why? Oh, just a feeling. Call it a hunch if you like. Now, wait a minute. Don, I don't think she's told us the truth. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri-State Insurance Underwriters International Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the McLean matter. A dead girl who was very much alive. Expense account, item two, five dollars. Lunch at a little place called the Copper Kettle for myself and Don Taylor. I think we should act, Johnny. Yeah, well, I don't. Not yet. Look, I listened to her whole story. You listen only a part of it, so get this. She was married to a doctor in Los Angeles, Dr. David McLean. Yeah, yeah. One night, two years ago, a girl named Teresa Corbett walked into his office, a little drunk and a little sick. She had a heart attack. She died. The doctor found a name and a Jersey City address in the girl's purse. He called up the New Jersey address, and an apartment house manager told him the girl's mother, her only living relative, died two days before. Dr. McLean hangs up and tells his wife he'll bury the other girl under her name and collect the insurance. No sense in going into all this, Johnny. Now, wait a minute. Doris McLean agreed to this. Her husband calls in another doctor and has the death certified. Doris McLean goes to New York. Her husband collects the insurance. But didn't meet her in New York as he said he would. Two years ago this happened, Don. Today she comes in and says, I'm tired of waiting for him. We cheated you. Do something to us. She also said she'd rather notice that her husband's going to marry some other girl. Makes sense to me. Yeah, well, not to me, Don. At least not all of it. Why? Why not? What are you looking for? The holes, the holes, and there are plenty of them, Don. Look, for one reason, she told it the same way both times. For the second reason, if all this happened on the spur of the moment in Los Angeles, that is, the girl came into the doctor's office off the street and died suddenly, why would the doctor bother to call New Jersey? Why wouldn't he call the Los Angeles police, for instance? Because he had the insurance thing in mind? Well, what do you think? Now, look, Johnny, I think you're pushing too hard in here. I'm trying to tell you what we're up against. All we have to do is verify our story. Yeah, well, there's something cockeyed in the way it comes out. According to Mrs. McLean's statement, the doctor thought of the insurance trick as he went along. That is, after he called Jersey City and found out the dead girl in his office had no one else in the world because her mother had died a couple of days before. After he saw he had a good chance. Yeah, he wouldn't have known he had a chance to pull the trick if he'd done what he was supposed to do and called the Los Angeles police. Yes, but... Now, that's important. And look, here's another thing. Mrs. McLean says she was acting as receptionist in his office when this strange girl came in. Now, I don't know about you, but every receptionist I've ever seen in a doctor's office will ask you your name and address before you see the doctor. Mrs. McLean didn't do that uh, at all. But... They'll get your name and address unless they already know it. Where's Mrs. McLean now? Over at the New Hartford Hotel. I asked Sam Benson to keep an eye on her until we file charges and take her into custody. Well, then you can call him off. Now, look here, Johnny. Every word she has told us will have to be verified before we can take any action like that. Every word. I don't know whether I want you to handle this or not. It's okay with me. Either way, Now, wait, Johnny. You want some more coffee? No, thanks. Let's not argue anymore. Okay, let's not. Mrs. McLean admitted she helped her husband cheat us out of $10,000. We've got that on paper. Look here. I made a check on the policy. We issued a straight life policy in Doris, Mary McLean in Los Angeles, April 23rd, 1945. According to our records, Mrs. McLean passed away February 1st, 1954. Yeah, yeah. Claim was filed by the beneficiary, husband, David Earl McLean, M.D., February 4th, and paid off on the 10th. $10,000 full claim. Here you are. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a photo stand of the death certificate attached. Yeah. Cause... Coronary thrombosis. And look at that signature. 
Dr. Willis Reed. That's the same doctor she said her husband called in. I know, I know. What else? A business about her living and working in New York in a medical lab. And this is the name of the place. Mm-hmm. She said she'd use the name of Patricia Kennedy. Well, I put in a call to their personnel manager. I described Mrs. McLean to him, and he said that sounded like her. Checked out. He'd been with him almost two years. Well, that's about it. Well, I call the airport, and they'll get me out to Los Angeles by tomorrow morning. Thought it'd take a few hours in New York to check some other things out. Joe, that looks pretty definite to me, especially with her statement and all the things she said. So what have you got to worry about, Johnny? All the things she didn't say. Expense account item three, $38.14. Transportation, Hartford, Connecticut, to New York, New York. I checked my bag at Idlewild and took the limousine in as far as the Waldorf. Expense account item four, $3, cab fare and tip. Number 22, 57th Street. Doris McLean's residence, where she'd lived as Patricia Kennedy, apartment 23. I talked to the manager. This is her apartment, Mr. Dollar. I see. How long has she lived here? Moved in, uh, two years ago next month, uh, March 1954. Good tenant? Very. Quiet. Ever talk to her? Not much. Christmas time, we had a drink together down in my apartment uh, with my wife. First time I knew she worked in a medical laboratory. Mm hmm. Does she have any friends in the building that I could talk to? Not that I know about. She keeps to herself, minds her own business. May I ask where she is now? In Hartford, Connecticut, at the New Hartford Hotel, if you want to talk to her about anything. I might want to talk to her about you. So? You knock on my door and say you're an insurance investigator and you want to look at her apartment. I saw your credentials and all that, but I don't know about you now. She asked me to investigate a matter. This is part of the investigation. Well, if you feel any better, why don't you telephone her long distance, tell her I'm here, I'll pay the charges. Oh, that, that's okay. Do you mind if I look around? I'll have to stay with you, Mr. Dollar. An hour later, I located a Mr. Platt at the Hyde Park Laboratories where Doris McLean had been working using the name Patricia Kennedy. His answers concerning her conduct, habits, and attitude were identical with those of the apartment house manager. I talked to three people who had been working with her in the lab. Same result. Expense account item five, $2.25. Long-distance phone call to Don Taylor in Hartford. Yeah? What'd you find out, Johnny? All clear here. Her story checks out about living in New York. I talked to the coroner's office in Jersey City. Oh? According to their records, a Constance May Corbett, age 61, died there January 27th, 1954. Body unclaimed. County buried her. Coroner's office unable to locate the next of kin, a daughter, Teresa Mary Corbett, believed living in Los Angeles. Well? Well, what do you want me to say? Coincidence or not, this part of it all checks out. Yeah, I'll admit that. Thank you. You're welcome. Expense account item six, $113.65. Transportation, New York to Los Angeles. We landed at International Airport in a heavy fog at 8.35 in the morning. By 9.35, I was in my room at the Statler Hotel sleeping. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I got up and showered and shaved and had something to eat. There was a special delivery airmail folder for me at the desk from Don Taylor. It contained a flash picture of Doris McLean, a sample of her fingerprints and handwriting, along with the names and addresses of several people in Los Angeles Mrs. McLean thought might be able to identify her. Expense account item seven, 50 bucks. Deposit on a rented car to get around Los Angeles. The first three addresses furnished by Mrs. McLean were blanks. No one home or whoever had been there had moved a long time ago. It was beginning to get dark by the time I got to the fourth one, an address on Berendo Street in Hollywood. Hello, I'm looking for Pauline Henderson. What do you want? I want to talk to her for a minute. My name's Johnny Dollar. Well, I'm Pauline Henderson. Oh, may I come in? What's your business? I'm an insurance investigator. Well, I don't have any insurance and I don't want any. Well, it's about a case. Uh, wait a minute, I'll put on a roll. Yeah, sure. Hope you aren't going to try to talk me into buying an annuity or something like that. No, no, nothing like that, Miss Henderson. Well, all right. Johnny Dollar, huh? Yeah, that's right. Insurance investigated, you say? Yes. Come in. I thought maybe you could help me. 
Well, I'll try. I'm in something of a hurry. Only take a minute, Miss Henderson. I'd like to have you look at this. Mm. Have you ever seen the woman in that picture before, Miss Henderson? It looks terribly familiar. Uh, is the light all right? Yeah, I can see it. My Lord, yes, I know her. Who is she? Well, that was Doris McLean. You're positive. Yeah, she was married to Dave McLean. He's a doctor here in Los Angeles. She died a year or so ago, very suddenly. Yes, so I understand. How well did you know Mrs. McLean, Miss Henderson? Oh, we were friends. I mean, we worked together in a medical lab here before she married Dave. How long did you know her? Five or six years. What is all this? Just wanted to make sure this was Mrs. McLean. My picture's of her, all right. Yes. You know, I don't think you've been exactly telling me the truth. <laughs> Well, I just had your name on a list, Miss Henderson. I was told that you might be able to recognize a picture of Doris McLean if you saw one. Who told you that? I'd rather not say. Nice. So mysterious. Well, I don't mean to be. You look nice enough. Is that all you want to know? Yes. Uh, well, one more thing. When did you hear about Mrs. McLean's death? The day after it happened. I read about it in the paper. It was quite a shock. Doris was always so healthy. How, uh... How did Dr. McLean take it? What? How did her husband take her death? Looking at a picture and saying yes and no is one thing. I, I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. Let's say I wanted to make sure this was Doris McLean, and I wanted to make sure she died two years ago. If I'm any authority, you can be sure of it. How about the other part? Dave McLean? Yeah. Well, he got over it, I suppose. Don't you know? Well, I haven't seen him since the funeral. What's your name again? Johnny Dollar. Where do you live? Hartford, Connecticut. I'm at the Stafford Hotel here right now. Why? It just occurred to me, if you wanted someone to look at the picture and identify it, you'd go to Dave McLean and ask him. After all, he was married to her. You'd go to him. I would. Yeah. you go to him before anybody else. I think I'll call him and tell him about you. What do you think of that? That's all right with me, Miss Henderson. Expense account item eight, three dollars and fifteen cents. Long distance phone call, Los Angeles to Hartford. Don Taylor. Hi, Johnny Dollar. Doris McLean still at the New Hartford Hotel? Yeah, why? Better call your private eye pal, Sam Benson, and tell him to keep an eye on her 24 hours a day. Huh? What are you talking about? The cat's getting out of the bag here. What? I could be wrong, Don. But if I'm right, somebody might want to kill her. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a bit of information about a girl who had a date to die. That's right. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.